welcome back YouTube this is my channel of an everyday life with an aspect if you follow me and you're new to my channel I welcome you I'm Aspe and I'm all about creating mental health and awareness versus sharing my life story of asbestos syndrome OCD and the light just to give you the lie down of my life experiences and how I cope with it day to day in, in my everyday life and I also create some mental health awareness series based on everyday mental health disorders be it whatever it may be be it depression bipolar and the like for any of you that may might need some tips and advice or just some sort of you know warning signs and symptoms so that you can seek professional help regardless of what they are just to give the you the guys the heads up when i do these i'm no medical doctor i'm just a normal everyday girl just sharing you guys my life stories and experiences with my condition as well as based on my training and life experiences with these tips and advice that i'm just pre-warning you with the signs and symptoms that you may hear about on some of these videos and if some of them do you ring alarming bells seek me a call advice or professional help for yourself or your loved one that you're concerned about and also just to be a heads up also I do some beauty from ashes kind of playlist things of certain everyday topics that we go through in our everyday lives be it if we've lost someone be it if we you know in our, in our, with our relationship and whatnot that some of this will come into effect as well just to let you guys know also though I'm going to take a break from some parts of the series as promised, but I'm hoping to get back on deck after Christmas. So what I'm hoping after Christmas also will be some few changes here and there, like my you know, channel should hopefully come into effect of difference of you know what it looks like when you come onto my channel of my you know banner as well as you know some other social media sites. I'll also link up some maybe new media sites so that you could follow me on if you need be, if you feel that nice or have to to private message me on there as well feel free to do so also feel free to share these videos around no matter what they are i feel in my heart sometimes with these mental health and awareness in just the normal everyday of scheme of things of my beautiful ashes playlist things or the everyday topics that i bring you need some people may need some motivation and inspiration or what have you here and then i'm here to support you guys as best as i can as a support person you know to you know push you through and despite of my everyday struggles it's all about us connecting and hopefully supporting each other regardless of what it may be so i'm not going to do guys basically this one's going to be all about pms and as i said before as a disclaimer i'm no medical professional so if you see any warning signs and symptoms that's out of the ordinary seek professional help and advice with your doctor or whoever you trust so that you can be happy and that because like i keep saying i can't stress it enough that i don't condone anyone to do self-harm regardless so in this one of the pms it's going to be broken down into three parts which is like the introductory part which is for the PMS is what is it, the causes, the signs and symptoms. The second part will be obviously the diagnosing of the PMS as well as hopefully as we go about it, the treatments, and then hopefully later on it could be broken up to four parts by signs of this. The misconceptions of it, like most of my mental health disorder series, I'm hoping to add in the misconceptions that many people tend to, you know, think what all these mental health disorders are like to remove the stigma and stereotype and what it's all about and also just to you know give clarity to you guys and understanding so let's begin this part one of the pms series with let's begin this premenstrual syndrome or pms is referred to the physical and emotional symptoms that will occur in the one to two weeks before a woman's period symptoms of them vary between different women and will resolve around the start of bleeding. The common symptoms may include acne, tender breasts, bloating, feeling tired, irritability, and mood changes. Often symptoms are present for around six days. A woman's pattern of symptoms may change over time, however. Symptoms don't occur during pregnancy or following menopause. The causes for your PMS, or shall we say the signs and symptoms will vary basically from time to time, basically. So you've got to remember that obviously with these signs and symptoms will vary from woman to woman, but there are more than 200 different symptoms to look out for. And basically this has been associated with PMS, common emotional and non-specific symptoms will include stress, anxiety, difficulty with sleep, headache, feeling tired, mood swings, increase emotional sensitivity and changes in the interest of sex. The physical symptoms, however, that is associated with the menstrual cycle will include, as I said, bloating, lower back pain, abdominal cramps, constipation, 
diarrhea, swelling or tenderness in the breast, cyclic acne and joint or muscle pain and maybe food cravings. The exact symptoms and the intensity will vary significantly again from woman to woman and even somewhat from their cycle to cycle patterns of their periods and over, and over time. Most women with premenstrual syndrome experience only a few of the possible symptoms in a relatively predictable pattern, however. The causes, however, while PMS is linked to the luteal phase, basically, and what I'm meaning here with the luteal phase is the later phase of the menstrual cycle in which humans and other few animals or the earlier phase of the estrus cycle and other placental mammals. It will begin with the formation of the corpus luteum and ends in either pregnancy or luteolysis. The main hormone associated with this stage is progesterone, which is significantly higher during the luteal phase than any other phases of the cycle. The opposite of luteal phase, the rest, the rest of the two weeks is called the follicular phase. Okay, just to give you a basic understanding of how luteal phase works of the hormonal events of it is basically after ovulation, the anterior pituitary hormones, FSH and LH causes the remaining parts of the dominant follicle to transform into the corpus luteum. It will continue to grow for some time after ovulation and produce significant amounts of hormones, particularly progesterone, and to a lesser extent, estrogen. Progesterone plays a vital role in making the endometrium receptive to implantation of the blastocyte, or blast blastocyst, I should say, and supportive of the early pregnancy. It also has the side effect of raising the woman's basal body temperature. Several days after ovulation, however, the increasing amount of estrogen produced by the corpus, corpus luteum may cause one or two days of fertile cervical mucus. The lower basal body temperatures or bite, this is known as a secondary estrogen surge. The hormones then are produced by the corpus luteum also suppresses production of the FSH and LH that the corpus luteum needs to maintain itself. With the continued low levels of FSH and LH, the corpus luteum will atrophy. The death of the corpus luteum results in falling levels of progesterone and estrogen. These falling levels of ovarian hormones cause increased levels of FSH, which begins recruiting follicles for the next cycle. The continued drops in levels of estrogen and progesterone triggers the end of the luteal phase, menstruation, and the beginning of the next cycle. The luteal phase lasts between 10 and 16 days, the average between 14 days, however. Luteal phases of less than 12 days may make it more difficult to achieve pregnancy. While luteal phase length varies significantly from woman to woman, for the same woman, the length will be fairly consistent from cycle to cycle. The loss of the copious Corpus luteum can be prevented by implantation of an embryo. After implantation, human embryos produce human chronic gonadotropin, gon which is strictly similar to LH and can preserve the corpus luteum. Because the hormone is unique to the embryo, most pregnancy test looks for the presence of the S HCG. If implantation occurs, however, the corpus luteum will continue to produce progesterone and maintain high vessel body temperatures for 8 to 12 weeks, after which the placenta takes over this function. Okay, obviously, the causes, obviously, as I said, basically, of PEMS ain't clear, but several factors may be involved. It could be the changes in the hormones during the menstrual cycle, seem to be an important factor. The changing in hormone levels after it may affect some women more than others. Also, you've got to be in mind with the chemical changes in the brain, stress, and emotional problems such as depression do not seem to cause PMS, but they may make it worse. Low levels of vitamins and minerals, high sodium, alcohol, and or caffeine, you know, can exasperate the symptoms such as water retention and bloating. PMS occurs more often in women who are between their late 20s and early 40s, have at least one child, have a family history of depression and have a past medical history of either postpartum depression or even a mood disorder, basically. So this quickly ends, but it's just short and brief, 
introduction to PMS. Could be a delightful thumbs up for support and engagement. Comment below for the most out anything or feel free to open the forum of basically, you know, how you guys cope with it, you know, so we can get a better understanding to all these more of all these mental health disorders or just these health disorders in general. Feel free to follow me on my social media sites, SB Answers All on Twitter, Facebook. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Feel free to also basically private message me if you feel the need or have to on my channel or even just you know private message me on SB Answers or all basically so that you know that you're not alone. Feel free to share these videos around to family and friends and all further you guys. Thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. Do what you love. Love what you do. SB Sony and I'll see you all again soon.